let me start recording at least. So here's what I want to talk about today, guys. Let, let's actually, let's, you know what, you know what, I'm going to go on the basics. I'm going to go over the basics again. Let's talk about process. Let, at least let me rant on this for a sec. So let's talk about the things that make a process and the things that break a process. So actually I could just talk about the general MIC process, you know, in general. So here's the thing that we're looking for every single day, right? Let me kind of blow this up a little bit more. Uh, do, do, do. So these were the runners this morning, guys. These were the runners. I want to go through the list. Uh, Tupperware was not one of them. <laughs> so we had XSPA today. We had SNMP. We had MGen. We had SCKT. And we had AUVI. Now let's talk about the thought process behind all of them and what process, or at least the MIC process in a nutshell relates. Um, so if I wanna blow one up, let me, let me do this real quick. Okay, so let's go one by one. XSPA was a stock that was heavily, heavily breaking down pre-market. What does this mean? This does not mean the MIC members are looking for a long bias trade on this. Why would you be? This is something that if we take a look at the daily. So every single day, guys, like one of the first things I take a look at is like the daily chart, right? And I'll take a look at the daily and I'll be like, man, you know, this is, this is not a needle dick chart. This is not like my favorite type of chart where like literally up, down, up, down, up, down. Every time it starts, every single day, uh, you know, like one of those stocks that just like, I'll give you an example. Like uh, what's... um. Uh, what's that one like Gevo or something like that? No, not Gevo. What's a what's a really good example, guys? Like the like the bet the worst daily you could possibly see, like CCL, CCCL or something. Uh, I'm trying to think of one of those old China names that is just terrible, dude. G guys, give me the worst ticker you know. I'm like brain farting right now. What's like? Um, God, I'm trying to think. What's that one that we do? We just traded the other day, literally. All right, well, whatever, I'll, I'll think about something, but XSPA, oops. Going back, let's just go back to, uh, I'll, th I'll think of one that's perfect and I'll show you a perfect example, but XSPA, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go on the daily chart and just be like, dude, that is the worst thing ever. Yeah, spy, spy, that's a bad one, that's a bad one. So check this real quick. Yeah, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about. That's not the, this is a good example, but it's not SGVX, let's see. Now you're talking, dude, thank you, Tyler. This is exactly what I was looking for. So <laughs> you troll. <laughs> so check this out, guys. Every single day, it slams back down. Every single day, needle dicks, dude. This is just a needle dick chart, literally. Like every time, even these little jumps, even these little jumps, oh, up and then right back down, it closes. So what does this mean? This is like a quintessential example of something that cannot hold its gains. There's always downtrenders, but when you see something like this, this is about as bad as it gets, literally. So if we go back to something like XSPA, this is the first thing I'm looking at every single day, right? Sorry, let's go to the daily chart. This is not something that I would throw insane conviction into like I would on those daily charts, but I still like this. You know, this is really down. This is beaten down. There's a lot of bag holders, man. There's a lot. But, you know, sometimes this actually kind of gets bought back up. So you never know. So it's not like it fails every single day it runs, but it's most likely to fail if it starts breaking down intraday. So when we go to intraday and we go to pre-market rather, dude, it's, look at this. Like the bag holders are just crushing this. It goes up pre-market and then it gets slaughtered. So remember what Bao said, man, in his IG live rant today is the, the concept of who gets smoked in the markets really is almost like a linear journey for the most part. Stubborn early shorts who are probably shorting this spike right here get smoked. Then a lot of the times, man, once the amateur shorts get smoked, the longs get smoked. And then we have intraday action from, from the open to the close where you, you, you use the lines to manipulate each level. So major levels that I like to focus on every single day, dude, I'm a freaking broken, broken record at this point, man, or where are the tops? This is the thing I love. Or of resistance point that is very, you know, very good, like VWAP, right? So these are the things, if I look at this chart, these are the three things that I'm taking into consideration immediately. Or 
I pass on the trade. So as short sellers, we're, we want weakness. We want broken charts. This is broken, dude. This is broken. In fact, this is almost too broken, literally, because now it's just like, if it starts off at the bottom where a hundred percent of the move practically gave up, this thing could honestly squeeze if the right tailwind got behind it or quote unquote. And I know, you know what I'm going to say here, pumper, if the right pumper comes in, right. And brings all of the sheep in, but this is why we do outer lines. This is why we don't chase shit like this. Yeah, you can make some money, but it's just never a good R and R. So I wanted a VWAP push in the morning. And for the guys who are still learning scaling, if you have a question on, hey, Tosh, what do I scale to? I know I start in at VWAP, but what if it goes against me over VWAP? I always give it to the next top. About this mid range right here is where topping action and consolidation points happen, right? See how it bounces off, it bounces off, and then this is kind of consolidation point, consolidation point. I would have scaled this level right here. If it would have broke, I probably would have stopped out, waited for a death candle, then got back in. But again, I'm not going to chase down here, man. <laughs> yeah, never heard of a pumper. What's that? I'm not chasing down here, man. What a waste of, what a waste of my mental capital. What a, dude, there's better plays, right? So again, you know, as traders, and I just want to make this as very clear as I can, at MIC, we teach you, don't fight stocks, dude. If it's broken, you want to wait for pops on a broken chart because the reason why you want to wait for a pop is because the trend is already intact on the downside. What does that mean? On a pop, you are joining trend. If you are a trend fighter, say you're a part of another service and they're like, dude, fight trend, fight trend, add until you're right. You're dead, dude. You're dead. Don't be a trend fighter. Ride trend like a freaking surfer, like a wave, like Austin in freaking Hawaii. So that was XSPA today. Didn't jump, didn't want it. It's just whatever, dude. It, it, didn't, it didn't hit my levels, so I didn't want it, right? Unfortunately, the same thing happened on SNMP. So what I like to do is I like to categorize on my TD charts because I use DOS for executions on another, uh, on another computer. But, but for the sake of this webinar, I, I organize them for you guys like this. I like in the morning, if I'm looking off TOS, which I ha actually have this link to a couple of monitors, which I don't know how to show you. I guess I, well, I, it wouldn't really even make a difference anyways. They're right here. But what I do is I just make these bigger but I categorize them. So on like my left screen, I'm going to have the very, very weak stocks. And then on like the right screen, I'm going to have the ones that are kind of holding the ones that might be front side. These are backside trades, man, XSPA and SNMP. So let's take a look at uh, SNMP today, guys. Take a look, dude. Look at this. I mean, let's look at the daily first. Let's take a look. It's a terrible daily, dude. It's, it's terrible. It does nothing. Then it has a big spike. But then dude, like a couple days later, it's trading at 60 cents from $1.60. And that's, and that's a big move for this stock. That's a big move. So now let's go to the intraday. Again, guys, this process we teach every single day. So, you know, again, stubborn shorts get smoked. The longs then get smoked. You know, this is following the exact trail. This technically should go down. But again, man, I wanted pops. So again, I'm the trader who's waiting for ideal entries or I just don't hit it. So this is the first point level that I care about. This is the second, which correlates to exactly this top level too. So that was almost like a double resistance, in my opinion, because if it does it here and then it does it here, I just love that shit. So, and then this is a third. So what I'm doing every single day is I'm waiting for a VWAP push and I will scale till here. That's what I will do. And then here's the thing, if I'm wrong, and it breaks this level. I here. I'll hold on one sec. If I'm wrong and it breaks this, I want to stop out because what I can do is instead of adding from freaking 103 to 160, hoping for a fail because there's no way there's going to break pre-market high a day. It's just too long of a journey. But hey, you know, crazier things can happen, man. It sometimes it does happen, dude. If the right pumper gets hold of it. But here's the thing: I stop out. So I can re-attack. And then if it does, say it does go to 170, say it does, but then it death candle slams. Then I can get on pops, risking pre-market high day again or new high day, whatever. But I can get it on pops and then write it down. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm doing all this crazy drawing. I hope that makes sense. But my point is, this is what we say when we say line to line or waiting for confirmation. I want the outer line that is VWAP because this is broken. I want to join in on pop. I don't want to chase this shit. I will scale from here to here. I will cut if I'm wrong, wait for the death candle, re-attack. This is a process every single day for years, for years.
for years. I don't know how to make this any more fucking clear, dude. Now, <laughs> we talk about pride. Dude, Allen Iverson was my favorite. Dude, he was my favorite player as a kid. Bro, I wanted to be Allen Iverson. He was my hero. That is so funny that you just did that, Woody. I haven't seen him in so long. Dude, he is my hero. He's a gangster, though, man. He's, <laughs> I don't know about as a human being, but as a ball player, he's a fucking gangster, dude. <laughs> Allen Iverson was like the he, – dude, he was he was literally like – I remember they were like documentaries and stuff. Dude, he was the wild child of the NBA, man. You didn't want to fuck with him. Little honey badger Allen Iverson. <laughs> I love that dude, man. All right, so now, 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 now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So guys, let's just going back, going back. I just gave you a full description of how every single day I look at the weakest stocks of the day, being a short seller, being, being yes, I long sometimes, but it's really on big caps. I'm a short seller on small caps. So here's what I'm looking for on the weakest stocks, the weakest. Now, out of the bunch, we had a couple that were not as weak as this, and you're not using VWAP as the, as the line you're actually going to use outer lines if you do if you do what I do. I'm a little bit more conservative than Alex about. They will do they will attack the inner lines, they'll attack the outer lines. I actually just wait for a perfect blackjack hand, like a 21. I really do. Uh, because I'm also doing big caps and probably dude, I'm not going to exaggerate this. I make money with my eyes closed on big cap swings almost 4 days a week that if I don't get my desired lines in small caps, I'm good. I'm good, dude. It's like, it's almost like retired trading in small. I get the perfect entry or I don't give a shit about it. Uh, so let's go. So MGen. Now let's go over what I was thinking about on MGen this morning. Remember what Joe and I talk about every single week, every single week. Sound like a broken freaking record. The lines that we are paying attention to are where the tops are pretty much like this and maybe like the wick. But like, I like the base of the candles, guys. I like where the base is kind of like hit into a point of contact. I don't like the wicks, but again, that is the final stop out, right? So let, let me explain these. This line right here, because that's a top, that's a top. And this is basically like the ultimate top, I guess, right? So I don't like inner lines. And specifically, why is this an inner line? Because it opened near VWAP. Dude, I... The, I, I can't say this enough, dude. I can't say this enough. Yes, you can make money on this. Look, the short sellers would have, but, but do you know how many times this squeezes through? Every single day on XSPA, the chances of this getting through VWAP is, is very hard because that's a long journey to VWAP. It hasn't been near VWAP, the volume weighted average price, the average of where all the orders are. It would be very hard to push through VWAP there. But on MGen, it would be very easy with the right catalyst or the right tailwind. So if it opens close or it's hugging or making love or French kissing VWAP all morning, I don't want it here at this inner line. Yes, exactly, bro. I'll talk about that in a second, Tyler. I don't want it here. I don't care if you make money here. I don't care. I want the 21 blackjack hand or I'm not playing it. I got my big cap swing, dude. I got, I got my automated money. So now you have to understand if these are outer lines, I'm hitting here, but here's, here's where it gets crazy. Here's where I'm going to give you probably the best lesson uh, 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 for the free guys could ever get in their entire life. This is it. If you find yourself even still having trouble with fantasy orders, stop with your fantasy orders. Just wait for the death candle. So if this is going up and this is going up, Dude, if you're, if you're like, hey, Tosh, you know, I'm just, I'm still, you know, I don't have much screen time. I'm having trouble, man. You know, sometimes outer lines work for me. Sometimes they don't. Look, I have fantasy orders all the time. But dude, I've been doing this seven years. So I know the ones that have a really good chance of breaking this pre-market high. And sometimes, dude, I can just feel in my bones or be in the matrix when it doesn't or it does. If you guys are still brand new and like, dude, half these work for me, half times they stop out just Stop hitting the fantasy orders. Wait for this to go up here and reject heavily, then join in on a pop. So instead of joining in right here, join in right here with, with, with a high day stop right here. Dude, you will see light years of consistency in your trading. Stop trying to get the outer line. Wait for the outer line to reject. Put in a stuff move, put in a candle like this, and then join in on a pop, risking very small. Because I don't want to be the guy who's starting in at 124 and adding to 150 
I just don't want to be that guy, dude. I want to be hitting much harder at an outer line. And if I'm too scared to hit the outer line, wait for the major reject. Wait for the death candle or wait for the major stop. They usually look like this. Even bigger than that. Wait for it and then hit the pop. And then if it craters under VWAP, you can add to your position. 30% of your size over VWAP comfortably, 70% under. Then you become the next Alex. Makes sense. Makes sense. Look, this is a lot, man. You guys, I'm recording this Q&A. You might have to watch this Q&A four times over to really understand what I'm talking about, but it's okay. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to give you guys everything. So that's MGen. Uh, on MGen, do you consider the candle at 9.32 to be a stuff candle? You're talking about, uh, duh, 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 right? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, you're talking about this? You're talking about this, Brian? The first candle? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a stuff, but it's not a stuff that, that makes me want to get in. I don't hit stuff moves if they're little stuffs. That's a little stuff because there's a top right here. That's a little stuff. Yeah, you could join in on this. Look, here's the thing. Trading, dude has many entry signals. I just want the ones where I'm like, dude, there's no way it could reclaim. This has been hugging VWAP all morning. So a little stuff like this, I'm not interested. Now, here's the difference. I'll show you the difference. If this stuff move cratered this down to here, dude, you bet your fucking ass I am on the next pop down here. Trying to ride it, trying to ride it lower and lower and lower. And look, 100%. But this has got to be so drastic that it's not even a question that the next pop is go time. It can't even be a question. I'm not, I'm not, dude, I'm not here to guess. I got my big cap swings. I'm not here to guess. It either gives me an outer line. If it feels too strong on an outer line, then I will wait for the stuff, hit a pop. If it doesn't give me either of those, I wait for the massive death candle at the gate to join pops. Where is the emotion? This little stuff, you can, you can definitely play that. I'm, I'm not going to lie, dude. I'm, I'm not even going to exaggerate it. Like you can absolutely be a little bit more ballsy of a trader. But if you are shorting right here, you better be stopping out if it breaks here and then re-attack later. You, I mean, because that's a reclaim. That's a, you know, that's a boom, you know? So that's my two cents on like a little stuff versus a big stuff. But yeah, so that's MGen. So now let's talk about SCKT. By the way, SCKT, guys, before I zoom in, uh, notice how it ran, what, three days ago? So there are tons of bag holders already from there. But again, but again, here's a level that I'm really looking at. Um, arguably, 410 is kind of good, but I would say just to stay safe, at the 422, uh, we'll say 420. We'll say 420 line. You don't have to be down in the fucking cent, dude. I, I'm not a, I'm not a trader who's like, oh my gosh, 422 versus 420, 420, dude. Seriously, uh, yeah. So this, uh, sorry, I should have drawn one at VWAP. Yeah, VWAP. So this one was kind of interesting. This was interesting. I think this was a really expensive bar day, right? I, I, didn't, I didn't pay attention to SCKT for, for whatever reason, man. This just kind of like was not on my radar. So I didn't even really even see this one until after. But looking at it in hindsight, of course, it looks like, oh, yeah, just hit it VWAP. But dude, honestly, honestly, I probably wouldn't have. I probably wouldn't have. I would have waited for my outer line at 390 with a scale to 420. And if it felt ultra strong, if it just like tell it parabolic immediately in the morning, well then I would just wait for it to squeeze and then put it in a top first before joining a, be putting in one of these candles before joining a pop downward. Make sense? 3K shares, uh, 290 bucks. Yeah, so it looks like that's what faded. Great, yeah, 3K, seriously, dude. You can do that all day. Uh, Tosh, slight tangent. There is a shit ton of vids to get through. I'm a new monthly member, got through a bunch already. My plan is to master the first balance, build my account, and then build and learn more. Uh, but there's so much content. Any advice on what to focus on, or is it advised to just watch all content straight through the blocks? So, uh, you know what, Duffer, it's a little bit harder as a monthly member, man, because what I would say is, dude, if you have the resources, get the accelerator course, man. Literally, dude, I'm, I'm telling you right now. 
Oh yeah, that's what it was. Faye, you're right. I knew it was super expensive. That's what I heard. I was like, yeah, dude, I probably wouldn't even have got it anyways. <laughs> so check this out. If you do have the resources, Duffer, this is going to be the way to go. Um, if you if you just didn't want to purchase that or right now that's just not the time for you, then the way you're going to want to do, man, is in my opinion, is take a week every take a week and and set a setup to it. So if you're still new in the markets, man, and you're like, dude, Tosh, I just really... I really don't know what I want to do, man. I don't know if I want, if I want to be a, you know, a first resistance play. I don't know if I want to be a death line. I don't know if I want to be first bounce. What I would say is practice for a sim for a month and spend four days to, you know, a whole week on one specific strategy on a sim and see if it feels right. So like what I would recommend, man, is coming in. If like you want to do the first bounce, you, the way to get really good at trading is to master one of them. But before you master one of them, you have to find your comfort zone of what even makes sense to you. So I'd spend five days, man, and just say, look, I don't care how tempted I am. I don't care how much FOMO I get. This week on this simulator or real account with small size, I am only going to play the first bounce because I need to see the repetitive nature and see if it feels right for me in finding your identity. So do the first bounce for the first week, do the death line for the second week, do the, you know, you know, what, I, yeah. I, and phase list is also really good. And I can show that in the MIC archive. But my point is, is as good as some of the content is to get through, you're still going to have to pull some triggers to see what even feels right for you. So you're going to want to do that, man, with like two shares on a real account or a simulator for, you know, however, you know, X, Y, Z amount of days until you go, you know what, dude, this is fucking clicking with me. I get this. I like this. This makes sense to my comfort level. Because here's the thing, man, in, in small caps, dude, I have such a, a um, low tolerance for pain when it comes to long side. This is why I don't long small caps. If I'm down $300 on a long and small caps, dude, I'm like sweating. But if I'm down like $1,200 on a freaking short, who cares, right? Like it's just, it's a comfort level. Like that's the whole, that's the funny thing about trading. And then in big caps, don't even get me started, dude. I could be down like $8,000 on a big cap position, not even bat an eye. I could be like, all right, let me add. It's, it's a really, it's a billion dollar company. I'll be fine. But that's swing trading. You know, I mean, there, there's very different, dude, there's so many different mentalities when it comes to trading, but you have to, in the beginning, identify what you're comfortable with and what's going to make sense for you. And yeah, so this is phase study plan, guys. Like if you want to just take a look at that, she's got a wonderful kind of roadmap and process of all the videos that got her started. Um, I've even taken a look when she posted that and it's really good, man. She really poured some time in that and it's, uh, it's great. And a lot of the videos are like live trading from James and how he breaks down a lot of this. So definitely take a look at that. Yeah, sure, man. No problem. Um, so as I was saying, guys, with something like this, this just felt like an inner line to me. This is just opening, you know, here's the thing. I don't like a stock at VWAP in the morning that has touched it within like the last 30 minutes. I want a nice hour where it hasn't touched it because then I can throw some size at VWAP. So I'd be hitting like a bitch right here instead of like actually hitting harder up here. Makes sense. So I like jumps up to like 390 and in this level. And then if you get a confirm, like, like a, like a confirmation candle with this, then you can start adding some size under VWAP. So this wasn't even on my radar today. If it was, no, you know, what am I going to cry over spilled milk? No, the locate was too expensive anyways, right? So welcome to small caps right now. Um, as it go, AUVI. Oh, dude, I was watching this one. All right, so check this. AUVI was a tricky one, man. This was tricky. So this was one that technically probably should have squeezed, right? It probably should have been the hot chick of the day, man. But this was so much range and this was like freaking pumpers and shit like that. So they got in, bagged the room, and then we had a death candle out the gate, dude. We had a death candle out the gate. Now, not big enough for me to join on a pop. Not with this kind of range because I've seen these squeeze back really easy. So this was not something I wanted to get on a pop. But outer lines didn't come, so I just avoided this altogether. And then, dude, this came about in really scared shorts with this teleport candle. But the thing about teleport candles is this is the opposite of a death candle, but there is one exception to the teleport candle. A real teleport candle that's really effective will close much higher over VWAP or at least burn through. Like if it closed like up here, when it closes and then rejects VWAP immediately, 
uh, it's tough, man. A lot of these don't have the power to continue, but had this gone a little bit higher, I felt like this really could have. But again, then you have, you know, farmer and all his sheep are really underwater in here. So it's, it's kind of hard, man. This was a long journey back to view up. And then you had a bunch of sheep that just wanted to get out of their positions from the open. So it's, it's a tough call, man, but this is not something I recommend longing after something like this. Um, just with the criteria that this was, but as it, as it came to the short, again, I didn't get my ideal entry. So it was a no go for me. So, you know, when you boil down the thought process every single day of how simple a process can be, it's as short sellers, we want the weakest stocks. And then if they're not weak, you need to wait for the confirmed that is weakness. Now, for a long bias trader, you need strength. You need strength. And unfortunately, man, I really feel for the long guys for the last three days, it's been really, really heavy of a, of a small cap market. I mean, dude, we're, uh, look at, these are five runners today, man. And I think there were a couple more, but again, I'm more focused on this webinar than every single ticker that's running is my point is, is every single one seems to just be cratering by the end of the day and specifically in the morning, like everything's been really heavy. So right now you just have to take that into consideration with kind of market cycles and specifically small cap cycles is look every now and then, man, you're just going to have to understand that for the next couple of weeks until that major runner comes, that black swan changes the market. A lot of it's more bias to the short side. So you have to know this going in. And sometimes dude, is there's five runners a day and all of them are squeezing our eyes out. And then the small cap traders, or I'm sorry, the, the short small cap traders are like, well, fuck dude, I can't catch a break. So you have to kind of know these market cycles. Oh man, I'm winded. Does anybody have any uh, questions? Any specific questions? <clears throat> Hopefully that's, hopefully this is kind of showing you guys what works for us and what we teach every single day. And here's the thing, just to kind of bottle cap uh, everything I just talked about guys, hard stops. If you're not using hard stops, you're fucking dead, dude, you're dead. So you got to use hard stops in your trading, man, where we're telling you to stop out, where the charts telling you to stop out and all that stuff. Hey, Obi, thanks for, uh, thanks for being a member. We try to help you as much as we can. Who's got some questions? I, I can't really see the YouTube. Um, usually I have Joe looking at the YouTube. Um, for anybody who has questions as a member, you guys, uh... <clears throat> hey, thanks, Ervin. Yeah, happy to help, man. So, oh, that's Tyler uh, said it earlier. So he posted my process. So check this out, guys. I wrote this a long time ago. Uh, this is what I'm looking for in the morning every single day. As always in the market, I will be playing my process. The weakest stocks on the day with the most amount of overhead. You got your XS, XSPAs, and you got your SNMPs. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Avoiding short the hot chick. So what was technically not really a hot chick today, but good God, man, if you had to clarify it, MGen was really the only one that was not a hot chick, but it was, it was taking the focus. It was taking the money current attention, like, right? Like the money current has to go somewhere where attention and money flows. And then the other ones can fade off quite nicely. Now, what I'm looking for in the morning is if I'm avoiding the hot chick and paying attention to the weakest stocks of the day, specifically these two, if the stock is opening near VWAP, like MGen, I will be hitting outer lines. So like I was saying earlier, guys, I'll be hitting outer lines up here if it's opening on VWAP. That's number one. That's number one. Number two, if the stock, if the stock opens extremely under VWAP, XSPA or SNMP, guess what? I will be hitting VWAP and I'll be scaling to the next top. So I would have been hitting, what was it? Um, we'll just say, uh, we'll just say, you know what, 105 to about 125, maybe 122. That's to the next top. If it breaks that next top, I'm probably wrong on my thesis and I can cut out line to line and then I can go to the next line or wait for the death candle to get in. Make sense? And then number three, guys, actually number three, which I think I have an updated version of this is Tyler, I think that's actually kind of old, is number three is usually what AUVI does. No outer lines are hit. No, no nothing, but a massive death candle at the gate. This was not big enough for me like to, like to hit a pop to get in. I told you that guys that. And the criteria here was a potential of a squeezer back. But usually if something like, um, um, let me just blow this up real quick. If MGen 
would have tanked out of the gate. So no outer lines, no nothing like that. Uh, screw VWAP, it doesn't even matter. But this death candle is down a freaking 74 cents. I'm definitely joining in on a pop. It's broken as hell. There's no way to recover from something like that. And if it did, it would be an astronomical, like, probability that it that it shouldn't. You know what I mean? Like, does that make sense? Uh, Uh, do, do, do. let's see. MIC study plan. It makes sense. Thanks. Mel. Do, do, do. Thank you guys. Last few days made me think to start shorting instead of longing. Well, Victor, that's just going to happen, bro. Don't here's the thing that, that I'm really glad you actually brought that up. So if you're a very profitable trader, bro, or very consistent on the long side, this is why I say, don't change your process, change your patience right now. Longs, I'm sorry, you guys are gonna have to be very patient. This is a short, small cap market. Until that black swan comes and rearranges the order, right now, brother, this is a short market. Shorts are getting bailed out even with bad entries, dude. It's just true. So I wouldn't, here's the thing. If you have a lot of success with longing, bro, I wouldn't just go to shorting just because, because here's what's gonna happen. You know, the minute you do, that big black swan comes and rips all shorts faces off and now we're in a long market again. And you're gonna be like, dude, why am I shorting? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Guys, we do not give free trials. We do not. Sorry. This is just too good a content, man. This is too good a content. We don't, we don't need the money, man. It's not, it's not about, here's the thing, man. We would give free trials, but it's not about the money, dude. If, if, if we wanted 10,000 members, then we would lower our price and give free trials. Dude, we don't care about 10,000 members. It's not, it's not about the, the cash grab. It's because we want the best community online with hardworking citizens, man. That's what it is. <laughs> Pony up to 197 and come, or the 197 and really come learn. And put, but put in the work. And that was Bow's rant today is, dude, how many times, how many times are we going to get, I get this text every single day, dude, two times a day, I'll get someone to text me or someone messages Bow, and they'd be like, dude, I, I went to XYZ service. Cause man, like I didn't want to pay the 197. I wanted to pay $60 or, or 120. And then guess what? I just lost $15,000. Can you give me a free trial? No, dude, fuck you. What do you mean? Give you a free trial. I'm sorry, bro. Like we are here for the people, but dude, like th this is a business to run, bro. This is a fucking business, man. Like, <laughs> like it doesn't even make sense, man. It doesn't even like now you're asking us to help you for free because what? bro, show us some respect. <laughs> like that's the stuff we don't stand for, man. We have big hearts and we will help someone legitimately all freaking day, dude. But, but seriously, man, don't, don't avoid us because you wanted a bargain sale, lose all your money and then come to us and then beg, dude. I, I'm sorry, man. We're, we're nice guys, but to a certain point, for God's sakes, dude, that would be like, <laughs> yeah, this is not Costco, dude, free samples. So, you know, Bao just wanted to get that off his chest today, guys, because Man, we're, we're such nice guys, man. We really are, dude. I mean, fuck, dude. We really try to help out as many as we can. And even, even I mean, hook, and, hook people up sometimes, man, if they're dead broke and, and they barely heard of trading and MIC and stuff. But, dude, like, it, it just gets to – there's a fine line, man. There's a fine line between insulting us. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. Claudio, dude, you are, you're, a, you're a brilliant man. I'm telling you right now, guys, if MIC was free – nobody would log in or pay attention that you think you think anybody any any member would be like profitable or consistent if mic was free dude it would be 90 percent less profitable traders you know why because nobody cares about free content no but they wouldn't log in do they wouldn't watch the videos why would they oh it's free i can just access it anytime and then guess what have it you know force of nature dude people are habitual man People by nature are procrastinators. They'll put it off. If they can put it off one day, they'll put it off three days. If they can put it off three days, they'll put it off five. Five turns into a year. Year turns into a decade, dude. Oh, but I still got the free membership. I'll get it to it once. No, dude. If you have to pay for a membership, you are going to use it. The best thing we ever did for the trading community was charge for MIC. 100%. 100,000%. And like the whole rant on how time is valuable. Fuck yeah, dude, seriously. Uh, all these free webinars are free samples. Can't believe this info is free. Yeah, man, sometimes, dude, it's like, look, sometimes we, again, we have big hearts, man. Like we want to help you guys out. But here's the thing, man. Here's the thing, SJ, that's so funny is these are still free webinars. 
So while this is good information, the majority of the people who are going to see this and, and watch this and watch it over again are the hard workers and the paying members. Dude, most of the free people are just, the reason why the financial literates, dude, of the world, the Mark Cubans, the freaking, you know, all the Shark Tank guys, Warren Buffett's, the reason why everything you need to learn out there is technically free, dude. Like you can literally learn all of financial literacy, real estate and shit on YouTube and, the, and like Grant Cardone's and all those guys give away their secrets is because they know that 99% of people are still not going to watch and apply it. So it's like, look, dude, we can do these free webinars, but the ones who are, the, the majority of the people who are watching this are paid members, dude. You guys still have to have a work ethic, man. That's the whole thing. It's like, nothing is given to you for free, man. Nobody is going to save you in this life. Nobody is going to come save you, man. The minute you own up that every, de every decision and every dollar is because of you, is where you succeed in life. That's where you like get in the driver's seat. Man, it took me a long time to learn that, man. I, it was into my early 20s, man, that I finally realized that. I was like, oh shit, man, mommy and daddy ain't here anymore? Damn. I was fucking babied as a kid, dude. I was, I was a sheltered baby kid, bro. I went into the real world and I was like, what the fuck is this, dude? Pie in the face. And then I was like, okay, okay, I get it now. I was a little bit of a late bloomer, but then I was like, okay, I get it. I see you. I just get you just I just gotta have respect for you and, and vice versa. That's it. Farmer shows you how to trade for free on YouTube and makes you money one way or another. Oh, and takes your money one way. Yeah, seriously. Jesus. The people who watch us are MIC. Yep. Time to nut up or shut up, man. I'm telling you right now, guys. Dude, Bow said it perfectly, guys. I promise you, dude. If you stick with the MIC process, you will be profitable. You will get there. If you're not right now, you will, man. But dude we provide everything you guys need, but it does take a work ethic. You're not going to get there if you don't work hard, but that's anything in life, man. How the hell are you going to find your spouse? How the hell are you going to get married? How the hell are you going to raise really good kids unless you be a good dad or you be a good mom or you, or you go to the bars to meet girls or the grocery stores and, and actively search it out, man. I mean, you can bumble all day, but you're going to get a certain clientele, man. Ever since I became a full-time day trader three months ago, every morning I wake up at 6.30 and in front of the computer at 7 a.m. I have not missed a day. If I could do it for someone else, um, why wouldn't I do it for me? This, dude, I love it. Bro, Cloud just said it so beautifully. If I could do it for someone else, why wouldn't I do it for me? Do you know what he's saying right there, guys? For those who are just reading that really quick, what he's saying is, if he has to wake up for a normal job and be on time and be respectful and be structured and, and live under someone else's rules and, and, and their assets and build their assets, why the fuck wouldn't he do it for himself, dude? Bro, hundred, dude, that's the best thing. That's the best thing I've read all day. That line. If I could do it for myself, why wouldn't I do it for me? If you could work a job you hate and be respectful and show up on time and be, you know, um, of service to someone else building their assets, why not build your own? I see MIC as a college videos or homework and trading as lessons implemented. Dude, solid, solid, bro. Solid hundred percent. Two more days. This will be my first all green month. Knock on wood. I might not trade Thursday or Friday. Just so I don't change myself. <laughs> My green month is because MIC Christopher, that is awesome, bro. That is so, that's so sick, dude. And you know what, man? Here's the thing. Here's the thing, bro. Here's the thing. I am all for you taking days off if you need to, because this game is so mental. So I'm a, so for, for a lot of you guys out there who are golfers, I'm a really big golfer, dude. In fact, I'm going to go, I golf every single day, Monday through Wednesday, when the market closes, at least for an hour. Like I'll get out there, um, you know, working my putting, working my chipping, working my driving. And then like, Friday after the market closed, I'll actually go out and do a full round of golf. And then I try to do golf on Fridays and Sundays. I'm actually very disciplined with my golf, <laughs> but here's the thing. Golf is as mental as trading is dude. If you don't feel like you're good that day, you're not going to be good. So if you need to take a day, man, just because you feel like, Oh shit, dude, I've already got this stigma in my thinking, bro. Take it, take it, take it. <laughs> Talk to you, so. <laughs> you clown. I love it. You look. Here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. Like, and I, I I'll rant on this for a second because today seems to be rant day from all of us. If you guys aren't doing what makes you happy, you got to change it, man. It's like so. For those who don't know, man, I'll talk about this for a second. Is so I was in Cali um, most of my life, man. And, and a lot of my life, I liked it until it kind of went downhill a little bit. Well, a lot of it. And I won't get into political reasons, but I was really 
having a hard time, dude. I was pretty miserable, bro, for the last for the last three months, man. I had moved back to Cali. Um, I was with a girl and all that stuff, my ex, and and I was in Cali, man, and we were trying to figure it out there, and and we were just bopping around just because like we didn't even know if we'd be stable in the relationship and stuff. And here's the thing, man. I went through extraordinary depression, dude. I mean, like depression, depression, like holy shit, dude. Not wanting to wake up some days, and 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 I was fucking, dude. I was so depressed, man. I like hated my life for like two or three months, and it was because of Cali, dude. I realized it, and like, yeah, the ex and all that, like, broke up with the ex. That's whatever, dude. I've broken up with many exes, dude. I'm so numb to relationship. You have no idea. You can be in love one day, out of love the next day. Who gives a shit? But here's the thing. I hated my surroundings, dude. Cali is a fucking nightmare in my eyes. Again, I'm not going to hate on it if someone likes it. But for me, I was miserable. So that affected trading. That affected relationships. That affected mood. Dude, I moved to Arizona. I'm alone out here, bro. Dude, to meet girls, to meet friends, I have to go on the golfing range and fucking golf with 80-year-old dudes that I don't know. My point is, is if you have a, if you're having a hard time, if you, if there's something in your life that you don't like, change it. Oh, Tosh, I can't move and I can't, tr- you know, I can't do this because all my family's here. Dude, I don't give a fuck. My family's in Cali, dude. I don't want to be in Cali. I moved, bro. I don't know anyone in this town, but I needed inner peace, man. I needed happiness. I love Arizona. I'm obsessed with this city. It is literally fucking paradise. All there is is golf. It's, 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 it's warm, except for three months out of the year, it gets excruciatingly hot. Okay, travel. Travel during those times. Guess what? It's beautiful out here, dude. There's no smog. There's not 10,000 homeless on every street corner. I don't want to see these things. It's a, it's, a, it's a red state. I'm red. So again, man, the whole point is I would much rather every single day be lonely than miserable. Because if you're miserable, dude, your trading's done. And that's why I wanted to have this rant, guys. Dude, I like I was taking loss after loss last month um, because, bro, my head was so fucked up mentally. I was going through a breakup. I hated Cali. I was like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, where do I go? I'm literally miserable. Dude, my best friend was like, dude, I haven't seen you like this in 10 years. And I said, you know what, dude? I've hit my limit. I don't care where I'm going. I don't care if I enjoy it. I'm going to throw a dart, bro. I'm out of here. I'm going to Arizona. I'm 30, bro. I'm 30. So I was like, dude, I don't have a family right now. I can get up and go. Money's not an issue. That's never been an issue. It's just, I can get up and go, dude. It's just, my, my point is, is everybody's dealing with something. Everybody's dealing with something. And some people hide it and mask it and you have no idea what it is. Dude, nobody, and not even, not even my freaking like if I had a brother, dude, he wouldn't even have known I was miserable for two months. You know what I mean? You get to a boiling point where you have to change your surroundings. So Again, when it comes back to happiness, the reason why I want to talk about happiness is because if you guys aren't happy in your lives, your trading stands no chance. It just doesn't do because your head's not right. <laughs> Thanks, man. But, but now I'm golfing every day, dude. I'm having the time of my life. I get to help MIC. I get to trade in the mornings. I get to help MIC. I get to go play tennis and golf, dude, and eat good food because this town is like restaurants everywhere. Tosh, there's a book coming next year that will be perfect. You, what the fuck is happening to me? A guide for young. <laughs> cool, man. I'll check it out. So my point is, is every now and then you're going to have to take a look in the mirror and be like, okay, I know how to trade. What the hell is that? Why, why, why am I having trouble? Oh, my surroundings. Oh, the relationship I am. Oh, today's a day where I shouldn't be trading. I just got in a, uh, you know, a big fight with my dad or my mom for the 18 year olds out there, whatever, dude, whatever. Maybe, maybe your spouse screamed at you. I don't know. Maybe you're going through a divorce. Dude, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I have gotten, um, um, probably <laughs> cool, man. Definitely. Let's go. No, dude, I'm happier than ever, man. This is probably the happiest I've ever been in my life, man. Cause I changed my surroundings for two months there, dude. I was like, I was like, I have to, like, I don't know what to do. Like back was against the wall, right? Like a rat. So my point is, is I know I'm like probably, you know, repeating myself or repeating myself, but it doesn't matter. You have money, you have love, you have this, you have that. Everybody has something that someone else doesn't have, or you could be jealous of or envious of, but it's, but life is up to you creating your own happiness. You have to, you have to, dude. And there's every excuse in the world there that you can use every single one. Everybody's got some unbelievable excuse. Guess what? You have to get past that shit, dude. So if you create your own happiness, 
and it's up to you, then it's up to you to learn your own trading. And it's up to you to go above and beyond for yourself. So this hit me hard, dude. This hit me hard. When, when, when Klaus said that, dude, Klaus, where did you say that again? If I could do it for someone else, why wouldn't I do it for me? Dude, I moved to Cali for a girl and I hated my life because of it. So I said, dude, I don't know one person in AZ. I'm moving to AZ because I'm doing it for me. And then my trading went gangbusters on fire again because I, because I was happy. My, my mind was calm, dude. Inner peace is the greatest asset in the world, dude. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, see now that's a book we all need. But the point is, and the point is like, maybe this is, maybe this is just fucking rant day, but like Bao wanted to get on the IG live today, guys. I want to talk about this. We're humans at the end of the day, man. And some days you're going to have drawbacks. Some months you're going to have drawbacks every now and then something is going to happen where you're just like, dude, I, I, I'm just, my back is against the wall. You can take a step back, you can readdress, and then you can get back in. Does that make sense? So that was kind of like the, that was kind of like the thing that I wanted to convey through this is that we're all human. And the minute that you expect yourself to be Superman, you've already lost. You just have to ask for help sometimes. And sometimes you just have to ask yourself for help. So that's what's super cool about trading and MIC is we're a full community. So if you need help in your trading, if you need help because you're struggling, if you need help from me mentally because your girlfriend's all nagging at you or your boyfriend's making your life, you know, a living hell, then well, reach out to me. You know what I mean? Like that, that's, that's why we're here for you guys. We're trading coaches, <laughs> life coaches today, apparently. <laughs> but dude, money is not the root of all happiness. It is not the root of all evil either. It is literally a opportunity giver. So what I would extend to anybody out there who's still, you know, just chasing money, man, just know that you're chasing freedom and money buys freedom. So it's, it's not, necessarily the money that you're chasing it's more the freedom and the things that it gets because money is really just opportunity so the quicker you can get to the point of trading for passion and understanding the game and understanding the art behind this and not just oh my god i need to make 200 dollars today to pay my rent i need to make this today to pay my rent i need to make 1500 dollars to pay my car it's not if you just chase the money you're dead you got to chase the passion man and then in the passion the money is going to flow but you got to learn the art and you got to fall in love with the art of this game and not just the money. Because if you do become a full-time trader, like we all are, or like a lot of us are, sorry. Um, for those who are not there yet, you know, that's okay too. Um, we have the freedom. So you, you're really after freedom and inner peace. And that was the thing that I was after you before anything was just not even a freedom. I had that. I had the money. Dude, it, it's inner peace, dude. I didn't have any inner peace, man, for like in Cali, dude. I had none. It's just not a place I wanted to be. So now I'm out here I'm golfing and doing all the shit, man. It's a calm life. It's cool. Get to breathe. No smog. Literally get to breathe. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about trading, about anything? Kind of here for you guys today. Just here to vent, here to talk. And I love what Klaus showed about, um, about his uh, positions, guys. That's the thing about swing trading is when you have a plan in place, you know, looking at certain red numbers, you know, Klaus kicking ass. But if he's down, you know, like a certain amount today, then if that's in his plan, that's in his plan. I'm sure he has a certain amount of risk in place. He'll stop out at a certain point if he's super wrong. If he's not super wrong, you know, and the plan is still playing intact, he's, he's already has a plan for that. And that's the point. You have to have a plan for all this. Perfect smoothie, dude. Chocolate peanut buttery from Whole Foods with, uh, with coconut milk, man. It's awesome, bro. It's awesome, man. Some days it's the best way to jumpstart a day, man. <clears throat> I'll give it like five more minutes, guys, if you guys have questions. Sorry I didn't have Joe on the YouTube today, but that's all good. We'll get him next week. <laughs> Bro, I, it's an, I haven't looked at calories one day in my entire life, man. I don't know what it, maybe it's a stress from trading, bro. I can't, it, dude, I, it, Bao always makes fun of me. He's always jealous of me. Cause he's like, he's like, dude, you can't gain weight. I'm like, but dude, you do realize that's a problem, right? Like I always look stick bone skin. I actually can't gain weight. Dude, it's, it, it, trust me. It's not just a benefit. It's actually kind of a problem. I have to eat so much more than the average person just to stay fit, dude. <laughs> or I'd look like a skeleton. 
do you ever feel like you can't do things like travel, focus on others, focus on family because trading is always consuming? Not anymore, John, in the beginning when I first started and I was like obsessed trying to figure out this game and just really just trying to figure out price action, all that, dude, I, Oh my God, man. Relationship after relationship. I couldn't give enough time. I was, I was married to charts. I was, I was obsessed with it. I didn't want to talk about anything else. I was probably boring to them because I didn't, I literally didn't talk about anything else, but I was fucking obsessed. Not anymore. Cause it got to a point of almost like automated, you know, cause process. But in the beginning, I mean, I did, man, I really did. People were, people would be like, oh man, Tosh is just going to talk about stocks again. I'll be like, fuck yeah, I am. <laughs> I'd be like, dude, of course, what the, the hell am I going to be talking about? That's okay. This, this legitimately passes as you um, get to a point of extreme comfortability and kind of expecting a paycheck every day or expecting to follow your process. But again, in the beginning, man, if you don't sleep, eat, breathe, and metamorph into it, it's going to be a hard road for you. It, it would be if you didn't do that stuff. So I'm all about it, man. In the beginning, obsess all the way, bud. Just again, remember there are people that probably want some of your attention out there. And, you know, if it's your mom's birthday, maybe don't ignore her and, and just focus on charts all day. <laughs> don't worry. I was just like you time and age will take care of that. I could drink a two liter of Coke. Every day. <laughs> hey, Edson, I, I hear that, bro. Everybody said at 30, I'm going to start like the guts going to come out. I'm 30, dude. I'll freaking stick skinny, man. I don't know, dude. I don't know. That's what's great about MIC people. You have to talk. Uh, you have to talk to because most people tune out when you start talking about you. exactly, bro. Exactly. You got to have your avenues, man. So, uh, you know, I, this is probably a terrible example, but like I knew someone recently that was in AA, and uh, I asked her, you know, kind of like what it, you know, I I never really drank alcohol, man. It was never my thing. I, I don't even drink now. And uh, I just never wanted to go near anything that was technically bad for you. This is why, I, like I said, I don't even fucking do dairy or gluten and stuff. But um, I was talking to her and she was like, I, I was like, you know, why do you go even though you've been going for like 20 years? Like what's still keeping you going? Because you need to talk about it. So if you're a trader or like an AA or something where there's a specific niche of people that understand you that the general populace just will not, you can't go to the mall, dude, and go up to a freaking perfume salesman and talk about trading, man. You can't, dude. You can't. They don't understand. Oh, hey, bro, I lost uh, $7,000 today. Can, uh, can you talk me through it? Yeah, sure. You want to buy this perfume? Hey, fuck you. No. <laughs> you, you can't talk about shit like that, dude, with normal people, man. You can't. Bro, I just made $15,000 this week. What do you think? Uh, oh, wow. Thanks, asshole. I'll make $10 an hour. Like, you know what I mean? You, dude, I'm telling you, man, some, some people find it insulting. Some people find it, you know, degrading. Some people find it uplifting. You got to find your people. And, and uh, there's no better day trading community than MIC, man, literally. There's just, it, it's just, it doesn't get better, man. There's a bunch of hardworking people in here that want to learn or they've already learned and want to get better. And we all understand each other. Oh, preferred time frame, Jeremiah, three minute every single day, bro. Check this out. Here's why. Here's why. Um, probably SCKT is probably the best example. Let's take a look. I always use three minute charts, guys, because check this out. You can really see the tanks. You can really see these candles. That is sexy for pops. That's sexy. That's why I do that. Uh, do, do, do. People always say never adding to a losing position. When do you decide to cut your loss instead of adding into your position? So Tony the Tiger, um, funny name, by the way. So when you, when the chart tells you, buddy, when the chart tells you to get out. So uh, right here, right? If I am scaling, um, and I'll just keep it really simple, literally as simple as possible. Say I wanted to scale this entire area, right? because there's a top right here and there's tops up to here. Say I wanted to scale this entire area from 390 to 433. Bro, it's not that my PL is telling me to stop out here. The chart is literally telling me to stop out right here. If I don't stop out right here, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot, dude, I'm an idiot. And then I'm gambling because this is breaking a major support level that shouldn't be technically broken. So the point is, man, it's when I'm adding to a position, I'm adding within my pre-plan. Anytime you do a scale or anytime you do ads, it should already be pre-planned of where you are going to get in 
add some bullets and then get out if you're wrong. But if I, if I was just stopping out, like, um, say right here, if I just stopped out right here, well then, you know, maybe I'm just stopping out because maybe I'm quote unquote down too much. I'm not stopping out where the charts telling me this is the scale zone for me. So if that's my predestined plan, if I'm stopping out or if I'm not stopping out, you know, and it continues and I'm not stopping out to 470, that I'm just, I'm just winging it. Like I'm just feeling it out. No, dude, I have a hard stop in there. You know what I mean? So you should always stop out where the chart tells you to. Uh, my wife, my wife asked who you're talking to. <laughs> who are you talking to in the tabs from MIC? That's awesome. Uh, Tosh, when you scale, do you size up as you, oh, dude, you know what? So funny, man. I, it literally depends. I swear to God, man. Sometimes I just go one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter. And then sometimes I'm so comfortable with the chart that I will, um, go up as I go. I will like, I'll keep it really basic for you guys. Just so even our small guys can understand, say you were starting in and you had four bullets, say you had a hundred shares right here. Sometimes you go 100, 200, 400, and then like 800. So like I, it's like a double on each, but you start off with small enough that makes sense that you can keep doubling and you're not just adding big size. You know what I mean? But the quickest way to get your average up is to add more as you go higher. I tend to be very careful on a stock with a ton, 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 ton of range. I will just do same amounts. But if it's a stock with not much range, like this didn't have too much range. So if I'm starting in at 390 up to 430, like around this area, um, I will add higher um, of a, um, what's called a bigger bullet each time I go up. Make sense? So like for the medium sized players, this would make sense to like say a thousand. Next is 1500. Next, maybe the last one might be 2500 or 3000. You see what I'm saying? Like you're going up because dude, your average is instead of incrementally going up, it's gonna, dude, it's gonna, it's gonna leap. So by the time you get that stuff move, you can cover half and then be pretty secure, man. So again, there's ways where you can go like this, dude. You can up your average gradually or you can jump that average, but it all has to be pre-planned, man. You have to be careful because just adding bigger size for the sake of adding bigger size is gonna get you in a rut so quickly if you don't know how to handle the emotions behind the numbers you are down first. And then um, the reason why I do it on um, the equal amounts, usually on like a really rangy stock is because there's so much range, man, that if I just get one death candle, it's usually like, I mean, dude, it's, it's drastic, right? Like they're usually huge. But on something where if I'm if I'm a little too early and I'm like, well, shit, man, you know, this is really um, this is really going up, then I um, uh, just lost my train of thought. I just got like four DMs. Uh, what was I saying? If this thing is just trickling up, then yeah, I'm gonna add more as I go because I might just need a little wash to cut it in and then re-attack into death candles and or breaks high day stop just whatever would have you. But you know, it's all about you, man. Back test all. God damn. <laughs> Boreth, I got you, buddy. <laughs> and are we going for 14? Eight? Not, do I hear nine? <laughs> it's like an auction, dude. Uh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> don't, mind the, don't mind the messages, guys. These are just DMs I'll get to later, but uh, I'll definitely take care of Boreth later. I just, uh, it's kind of funny. I, I don't usually get so many so quickly. When you mention your long zoom and you hope it goes down so you can buy more. Um, yeah, so that's a swing. That's a swing, man. I want to hold zoom for the next three years, dude. That's very, very different. And like a whole different webinar. This, I'm talking day trading today. That is something where, I, I mean, I, I would like to honestly invest in this for like the next three years. But that is not, um, that is not, that is not recommendation at like, you know, buy or sell. That's, that's just my own personal opinion. Me and Faye are definitely loving Zoom. Um, I think I, I just have a little bit up here because, because I know it's still in 500s. I'd like this to go down to like the mid fours, dude, seriously. So yeah, I, I have 31 uh, positions in my swing account open. Dude, I'm waiting for after the elections. The, the, uh, the volatility is going to come, man. It's, it's probably going to bring a really big down market. I'm assuming um, depending on who gets elected, man, there might be civil unrest in the streets, dude. Timestamp this webinar. I'm telling you right now, if certain people get elected, dude, there might be fucking riots, dude. There might be civil unrest. And if there is, 
market is most likely going to go south for a while. And I hope it does because I've got some positions where I would love, 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 love to add. And remember, remember, dude, you have to understand with someone who's been doing this for so long, I've got retirement accounts I'm talking about. I've got day trade accounts. I've got swing trading accounts. This is not just like, not just, oh, my Cobra account. You know what I mean? Like I've got a lot of accounts where for different reasons. So I want things like freaking Amazon to go back down to 2,500 so I can get in and hold that for the next freaking 15 years. You know what I mean? Like Alex has been holding Amazon for like what, two years or something like some shit like that, three years. So the whole point is for different reasons, but that's, that's more of a different webinar. But there's just know, man, there, there's a million ways to trade. There's a million ways to trade, but today was more of a, um, um, a day trade, day trade webinar. Tosh, the market is going south. The European countries are gearing up for winter. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, man, the markets, are, I was expecting it. Dude, if, oh my God, you guys are going to die. For the last five months, I have been saying it. Who, I know some of you guys rewatch these. One of you guys can, can literally corroborate. Bro, if you go back through any of these Wednesday webinars, when did I say the market was going to take a shit? Every, it was going up. It was going up. The Fed kept buying and buying and buying. They're the biggest investor of all time. They just kept buying with their eyes closed. I said, come November, dude, we're going to get a market tank. I've been waiting for this, dude. I've been ready for this. I'm, I'm very, very, very lightly positioned across a lot of positions right now that I am begging for a market tank to get a lot more. But I'm talking shit I'd like to hold for the next 10 years. Just because we day trade doesn't mean we don't like uh, long-term investing. Dude, I, I legitimately think, I swear, dude, I legitimately think that the SPY has the potential to go back to something like 260. I really do. I'm not saying it will. I'm not, I'm, and I'm not even, I'm not even saying like, I think it will. I'm just saying it like it has the potential, man. Dude, the pandemic is still not over. You know, God forbid, or God willing, you know, it does, it does, it does end at some point, man. But dude, it's, it's not over. We've got, we've got a whole election, depending on who gets elected with the riots. And there's just so much going on, man, that d diversification is the key. Diversification is for the ones who have no idea where to park money. Uh, no, my quote, but Warren Buffett. Oh, not my quote, but Warren Buffett. Yeah. Diversification is the key for uncertainty. 100%. Couldn't agree more. 100,000%. Dude, I think even Warren Buffett said uh, he's so convicted in his spy. So, like, if you guys pay attention to um, the SPY, right? Like, so for those who don't know what this is, I mean, if you don't know what this is, man, you really gotta, you really gotta learn. This is the market, man. This is, this is the overall market. This is the S and P 500, you know, built up on many, 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 many companies that, you know, man. So the point of this is the reason why I want to bring this up is over the last like hundred years, if you average it out to an annual median return, dude, it's like, it's like 10% for like 80 years or something like that. Like it's crazy. I, I don't know the exact numbers. I really don't. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not as well versed in the investing as I am day trading, but I'm telling you right now of like at least a little bit of my knowledge, the spy has given back like a 10% annual return on it, on at least a medium, like an average medium for like the last 80 to a hundred years, dude, meaning, meaning that Warren Buffett said, if he died tomorrow, just park 80% of my money in the spy and never look at it again. He bets on the American economy. So that is why, we do things like long-term investing or some of us do, or, you know, believe in things like that. Like this is the economy, dude, this is the spy, but this is what happened during the pandemic. Now that the pandemic is already out there and people know about it, I don't think we'll get 218, but fuck dude, I, who knows, man, who knows if there's civil unrest in the street, depending on the election, just always be ready for any eventuality in trading. That's what I'm trying to say here. Just be careful, man. Just be careful where you park your money. I lost my senior year of high school due to the pandemic. Did not think it would last. Yeah, crazy, right? Seriously. High school, man, you're not missing that much, buddy. <laughs> College, though. Tony, have a good night. Yeah, guys, I'm going to kick out right now. I think this is, I'm definitely winded. This was definitely a heartfelt webinar. If you guys have any questions about MIC, uh, text me at 213-458-5997. I will definitely get back to you. Make sure that you get in the club, get all your questions answered. And, uh, <laughs> thanks a lot guys. Seriously, man, this was a lot of fun.
Jay Trigger, later, buddy. Woody, Kevin, thanks for showing up, guys. Tom, 1994. Uh, Arthur, John, thank you guys. Seriously, man. Dude, you guys are family, man. I can't wait to do this next week, man. And hey, I'll just leave you with this, man. Do the things that make you happy. Seriously, I'm going to go practice some golf right now in the next couple hours. Do the things that make you happy. You will trade better. I promise you. I promise you, man. They're linked. All right, see you guys.